Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another weekly meal prep. Also, this video is sponsored by Allform. I'll be sharing a little bit more about that later on in the video. So if you're new around here, when I do a weekly meal prep, I just go through my menu for the week and I show you the things that I am prepping. Some things are freezer meals because I do make freezer meals monthly, which you can check out on my channel, but some things I do actually make right that week. So it's a good mixture of a lot of different things. So to start out, I was putting my green beans that we'll be using later in the video into a little bit of water with a splash of white vinegar just to soak and to get nice and clean. So Monday we're going to do chicken fajitas, which is a freezer meal along with some cowboy caviar. I'll be honest, it has been years since I've made cowboy caviar. If you don't know what that is, it's basically like a dip that's a little bit like salsa, but it has some beans in it and it's just really, really yummy, especially in the summertime when the veggies are all fresh and you can pull them right from the garden. We're not quite there yet here in central Pennsylvania. My garden is not quite ready to be harvesting things from, but whenever it is, this is a recipe I definitely want to use with my own homegrown veggies. So as usual, the recipes will be linked below or they will be typed out in the description box so you can check everything out there. You can also find links for other things in the video. So you basically just cut up your veggies for this. You're gonna need some red pepper, some purple onion, and some tomato. And if your tomato is a little bit on the soft side, you can actually take the seeds and things out of the tomato. These tomatoes were nice and firm, so I didn't really need to remove the seeds seeds and they worked out perfectly for this dip. Then to make the dressing, you're gonna use some lime juice. I just used some out of a bottle. I have some local honey that I added in, which is great. You can get the benefits from that since you're not heating this recipe if you're using raw honey. And you're gonna add in some spices. And of course, I like to use my pink Himalayan salt. And then the oil that I used for this is avocado oil. I use it in almost everything I cook with. I love avocado oil. And then lastly, you can dice up a avocado and throw that in. And since it does have that nice lime juice in there, this stores excellent in the refrigerator. So even if you're making it a few days ahead of time for a meal, it really helps to preserve that green color of the avocado since it has the good acidity from the lime juice in the dressing. Once you have everything in the bowl, all you really need to do is mix it up and you can eat this with tortilla chips or you can even pile it on top of some quesadilla. Yes. Okay, Tuesday we are going to do a Greek sheet pan dinner with rice and oh my, oh my goodness, this recipe was so delicious. I'm definitely making it again for sure. If you love Greek food or anything with a very strong Greek flavor, this recipe is for you. So first of all, I cut up some zucchini and just made it into some nice bite-sized pieces and spread it out on the sheet pan. I did put one of my mats that I love from Amazon down on the bottom. I really have pretty much quit using parchment paper just because these mats are so convenient. Next, I cut up a yellow bell pepper and I just did it in strips. I just think with a sheet pan meal, you love those bite-sized pieces. Then I grabbed some cherry tomatoes and I cut those in half just to get a good bite size and threw them on the pan as well. Now we're going to start creating our marinade slash dressing that will be going over our meat and veggies. Like I said, Allform is this week's sponsor and Allform is obsessed with providing a high quality modular sofa design for real life. Each all-form sofa features a sleek modern aesthetic and is made using high quality material designed to be comfy and durable. Their fabrics are all heavy duty, scratch, pill, and stain resistant without sacrificing a comfortable feel. Since I work from home and we also homeschool, our living space gets used so much. So having a high quality sofa is extremely important to us and being able to trust that it will hold up for years to come. I was very happy with how everything feels with this couch. It's so comfortable, perfect for movie nights and all of our family activities. This furniture was so simple to put together. It's completely tool free, which is awesome there's no hassle, you can put it together and move it very, very easily. 
My brother and I were able to put this together so quickly and it's so versatile. They have a lot of different shapes and sizes, whatever fits your space. They have chairs, they have love seats. The options are truly endless and will work for any style home. There is a huge color selection, which I thought was really neat. And you can also select the color you want of the legs, which I think works well to match different floorings and other furnishings you may already have in your home. As a mom and a pet owner, another feature that I appreciate a lot is the covers on the back cushions and the seat cushions are removable. So if you have a mess that you need to clean up, it's simple to accomplish. They have a promise of a 100 day relaxation trial and 100% free fast delivery. I love my all form sofa and I think you would too. If you're looking for some new seating, check out all form, visit the link below or go to allform.com slash Adeline for 20% off the sofa of your choice. For this dressing, you'll start out with some lemon juice. I added some avocado oil. Again, you could use olive oil instead. You want some fresh pressed garlic. I love fresh garlic in things. And I tried to plant some in my garden, but it doesn't seem like it's growing this year. So any tips on growing garlic, I would love to hear in the comments below. Next, you're going to add in some mustard and a few other seasonings that you can find in the recipe below. Then you'll be whisking all of that together. And once I had the dressing made up, I went ahead and nestled about five chicken thighs with the skin on into the veggies. And then I took a nice little silicone brush and just brushed it all over the chicken. And once I felt like the chicken was covered well, I poured the rest of the marinade over top of all of the veggies. I cannot even explain to you how delicious this is. I wish that I could somehow get you the incredible aromas of this meal. Once you have baked all of that up, you go ahead and pull it out of the oven and then you wanna add these olives. They are so good. You can eat them right out of the jar. I used to not be a big olive eater, but for some reason, they have just become something I really enjoy eating. Then you top it with feta cheese. You can pop it back in the oven for a couple minutes or just simply eat it like this. For Wednesday, we are going to do loaded potato soup and turkey Dijon melts. I think that potato soup is probably one of our family favorites. The first thing that you're gonna do for this recipe is cut up a entire pound of bacon into bite-sized pieces. You're gonna throw that in the pan and just let that cook up. While the bacon was cooking up, I started prepping my melts. Now these are really easy to prepare ahead of time. So you're going to use Monterey cheese and I sliced it myself because I wanted a thicker slice of cheese than what the deli would normally give me just because I wanted it to be nice and cheesy and melty along with the turkey. At this point, my bacon was done frying, so I pulled it out with some tongs, and then I emptied out about probably a little over half of the bacon grease, but you definitely wanna leave some of it in the bottom. You're gonna dice up an onion, and you're gonna throw that right in to the bacon grease. Oh, it's just so good, so good. I had my sister-in-law over with her children the next day, and we had some of this for lunch and she could not stop raving about it as well. It was just really delicious. So I was having a problem with my onions getting a little bit dark before I got my garlic minced, so I threw some butter in with it just to help slow down the burning process of the onions, which they did fine, they didn't burn. And then I added in some of the garlic I had minced. Next, I pulled two jars of my home canned potatoes. Now, you can cook up your own potatoes in a separate pot and it's the same thing. You don't need to worry about using home canned potatoes. It's just convenient because I have a lot on the shelf and I like to use them in recipes like this. So next I added some gluten-free flour. You can also use regular flour as you'll see in the recipe below, but we are gluten-free, so this I just threw the gluten-free flour into. Then you're gonna add some cream, some sour cream, a little bit of black pepper. Oh, it's just so, so good. It's such a great comfort food. Then I dumped in my home canned potatoes and I just really did this the easy way. I kind of chomped them up a little bit with my meat um, chomper and then I put my immersion blender in the soup as well and just blended that up and I didn't completely blend all of the potatoes I just blended it enough that it started to thicken and really get that true potato soup 
texture. Then I added some cheddar cheese and I couldn't find fresh chives at my store, but they did have freeze dried chives and I feel like they did great in this recipe. And then you're gonna add back in your bacon pieces and all you gotta do is stir it up. And this is so good. My girls asked me if we could can this, which you can't can this just because of some of the components in it but you definitely can can the potatoes to make it up really quickly. So I put that in the refrigerator once it cooled and I assembled my melts. So I was making the mayo kind of dressing that I'm going to be putting on the sandwiches that I'll be assembling, but I'm going to keep the dressing separate until I'm ready to make the melts on the day that we eat the soup. So I just put it into a little jar. It is just some mayo, some Dijon mustard, and a little bit of smoked paprika all mixed up. Then I used some gluten-free bread for this, but of course you could use regular bread for this. And I just put one piece of cheese, some turkey, and then another piece of cheese and wrapped it up into the press and seal and threw it into the refrigerator. Whenever you make these in the frying pan as a melt, you're going to want to make them in a nice amount of butter so that they're nice and golden. Thursday, we are going to do spaghetti squash lasagna, which is a freezer meal that I made in my last video, so you can go check that out. And we're also going to do some parm garlic green beans roasted in the oven. So I had put them into my salad spinner. I just spun them off so that they're a little bit dry. And these were fresh green beans, so I had to snap off the ends that aren't so tasty in your mouth and I just lined them up like this. I felt like they roasted so evenly by just kind of making some even rows with the green beans. And I like them a little longer. You could definitely snap them in half if you wanted to. Next, I'm gonna make up some garlic oil and I just use avocado oil again. You could use olive oil. And I put some fresh minced garlic into that and I whisked it together. And then to apply this, I just felt like the easiest thing to use was a silicone brush. So I just kind of brushed it over the green beans evenly and it just, oh, this makes your house smell so good whenever you roast these up. Now the Parmesan, you could shred it, but I love using these big shards that I can make with my serrated peeler. So I just peeled those off of the side of the Parmesan, laid them over the green beans just like so, and popped them in the oven. And you can also add salt and pepper to this as well. I probably will do that whenever we reheat it for the meal that this goes with. Friday we're going to be doing meatball subs which is a freezer meal with deviled eggs and pineapple coleslaw. Oh this pineapple coleslaw is one that I'm really excited to share with you. So the first thing I did was get my eggs boiling so that I could get them cooled down till I was done prepping everything. So I just made hard boiled eggs and I do mine for 10 minutes boiling. Um, I don't know what everybody else does but that's just all, what I can always remember is to do them 10 minutes. And then my mom usually put her hard boiled eggs into ice water. So if I have ice on hand, I do like to do that and get them cooled down quickly so I can pop them right into the refrigerator. So I just put some ice over them and then I poured in some cold water and I actually did this twice. I didn't film doing it twice, but I did it twice just to get them cooled down quick. So next, I got all of my ingredients out to make this coleslaw, and for some reason, in my memory, I thought that there was mayo in this recipe, and there is not. However, it does have Greek yogurt in it, it has pineapple, it has a splash of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of brown sugar, which if you're being sensitive to sugar, you could also use a brown sugar substitute, and then you have your shredded coleslaw mix. Or you could shred your own cabbage, which either way, it'll turn out delicious. So once you have all of those dressing ingredients put into your your bowl you can whisk it up a little bit kind of get them all mixed together well and then this is what really makes this dish pop you want to chop up some fresh cilantro and some fresh green onion these green onions were kind of on their last leg but they did fine for in this coleslaw
If your canned pineapple is not cut small enough, you may wanna chop it up yourself just to give them a little bit more bite-sized pieces in this and then you're done. You can stir everything together and I'll be honest with you, I feel like this recipe does better if it sits for a day or so just to get those flavors all combined. As usual, I do like to prepare some fruit for the week and even veggies sometimes. This day I didn't do any veggies, but I did do some fruit. So I got my blueberries soaking in a little bit of white vinegar water inside of my salad spinner while I chopped up some cantaloupe. We love cantaloupe. And some of you may have watched my refrigerator organization video on my home channel. I will try to link that below if you guys want to check that out. But this large container from Amazon is absolutely amazing for watermelon and cantaloupe. I feel like I never have a container that's just the right size to hold all of the fruit that these melons provide and this one just really hit the nail on the head plus it's got the little piece on the bottom that kind of catches all of the juices that come from melons as they sit in the refrigerator. These small square containers are also from Amazon and they do a great job at keeping fruit as well. So I put my blueberries into these two just to make them easier to grab out of the refrigerator. I know I had posted on Instagram not that long ago how our family can just really eat a lot of blueberries. Let me know in the comments if your family is the same way. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope that this video inspired you. Don't forget to check all the info and links out in the description box below, and I will see you all in my next video.